The Constitutional Council, which the current government established to get rid of corruption, has now become its symbol. The president mentioned Judge Deepali Vijayasundara's name for the position of chairman of the appeals court because she has been a senior justice for eight years. But that nomination was rejected. The president made the nomination for a second time, which was also rejected. There is a view in this country that the UNP rejects this nomination because she was the one who gave an unfavorable ruling to them in the white flag court case. In my capacity as leader of the opposition, I was an extra member of the Constitutional Council for a period of three years. We always endeavor to work in close cooperation with the President. Uh, my previous speaker, uh, the person who moved the motion, referred to the fact that the Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition, meaning me, were entitled to make certain appointments. Yes, we were entitled to make certain appointments. I told the Prime Minister, I told you, Honourable Speaker, that I would like a member of the joint opposition to be appointed as member of the Constitutional Council. In fact, from your room, I phoned the Honourable Mind Rajapaksa and consulted him in regard to the person whom I should appoint from the joint opposition to the Constitutional Council. He asked me whether I had any name in mind, and when I mentioned Mr. Chamal Rajapaksa's name to him, he accepted that, and I recommended the appointment of Mr. Chamal Rajapaksa. That was how the Constitutional Council was constituted. If the mover of the motion complaining about the appointment to Honorable Chamal Rajapaksa, a member of the Constitutional Council, on my recommendation, what accusation can he make in regard to any recommendation I have made when the name I have recommended is the name of a member of Parliament of the Joint Opposition and the brother of Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa? The Chief Justice opposed this nomination and that is why it was rejected. MPs were asked to send suggestions and why didn't you send any? This problem wouldn't have arisen had members talked among themselves as to what criteria should be followed during the maiden session of the Constitutional Council itself. It is not the duty of the Constitutional Council to approve every recommendation made by the President. We agree 100% that the composition of the Constitutional Council should change. The number of MPs should be reduced. The best option is to make all 10 members independent persons. It is wrong to put the entire blame on the Speaker. This debate is also somewhat about the ruler and the ruled. If a democracy is to prevail, the separation of powers must be protected. We have a situation where the head of state is also the head of the government. This is why it is particularly important that there must be checks and balances on the executive president. We have also had a debate recently on the Constitution Council approving nominees on the matter of seniority. Seniority is important. But seniority alone must not be the determinant. It should be a meritocracy. Whether it is a judicial service, whether it's a public service, efficiency should be looked at. Good performance should be looked at. Integrity should be considered. You need a council because discretion has to be used in making important decisions and important appointments. I must tell you very clearly that I have no problem with any of the appointments already made for the Supreme Court and Appeals Court. I understand that certain parties are trying to misinterpret my views in an attempt to give the wrong picture to the judiciary and the public. The 19th Amendment clearly states what should the duties be, as well as the responsibilities and principles of the Constitutional Council. But we haven't implemented any of those. I take issue with the lack of disclosure of reasons behind the rejection of these nominations. The Constitutional Council has so far rejected nominations of 14 judges. I have nominated some names at least three times. So don't I, as the President, have the right to know the reasons behind these rejections? As for the duties and the responsibilities vested in me by the Constitution, I not only have the legal right, but I also hold the ethical right to look into the proceedings of the Constitutional Council. The Council should not surpass the powers of the Executive President. Currently, the Legislature, the Executive as well as the Judiciary seem to be controlled by this Constitutional Council and there are various facts to back that up. But it is proved through the behavior of the Constitutional Council that none of the objectives expected by the society that respects democracy and good governance have been achieved.